Hi, my name is Tavita, and I'm a certified orthodox prosthetist practicing anaplastology, and I am here to help you pass your written sim, I hope. And it's going to be totally up to you how you're going to pass by using this information. Hopefully this helps. First of all, we got to look at the test content outline. How do you get here? Go to the abc.org website, which I'm just going to click here. Go to certified, become certified. Click orthotics and prosthetics. Then you're going to scroll all the way down, all the way down to practitioner exam prep. And scroll all the way down again to prosthetic sim. This is going to be all the information that you'll be needing to pass the board exam. If you understand all of this information, you will be able to pass it, but you need to set up correctly. You got to be able to be prepared. So by reading the instructions first, read the instructions. The instructions are very specific. You're going to get a question. You're going to get a patient. A patient's going to have a couple of things like height, age, weight, uh, amputation, date of amputation, things like that. And basic information. You're supposed to take that basic information and then use that to uh, ask more questions. So they're going to give you a bunch of more bunch of questions to ask the patient in order for you to get information. Now read all the questions that they give you. Once you read all the questions that they give you, then set it up for your success. Don't just answer the questions as you think that they pertain to the patient. Don't just click through. You see manual muscle testing. You click on that. Don't do that. Don't do range of motion. Don't do any of that. First of all, you got to start with what you see. What you see, which side of the patient is amputated, which side of the patient, you know, all that's, all of those things should be running through your mind, how old they are. And once you see with your eyes, you ask the questions that we, you ask questions based on what you see, then you use your ears. You're asking questions based on information the patient's giving you, such as, uh, do they, can they change their cadence? Can you walk faster or slower? Uh, do you walk on uneven terrain? Do you hike? What is your occupation? What do you do for your job? If you ask those questions, you'll be able to get an idea of what the K levels are. Now, K levels are, they just go from K0, 1, 2, and 3. This is just created by this person, and it's on a Quizlet. It's public. So you can go ahead and look prosthetics unit two test. That's fine. I'm just using this for an example. K0, uh, no ability to ambulate or transfer. So if the patient says they can walk or they would like to walk again, things like that, that's not K0. They've moved already on to K1 in your mind. So K1, you should already have basic basic feet. Come on, just do satch foot, okay? A locking knee. Um, don't do medi knee. Come on, we're not trying to get so specific into what specific knees that you use in particular just make sure you understand the satch foot and the locking knee so house ambulation transfer ambulates this is easier for transfers because they can lock it's safer they can sit k2 we got a description so k2 if the patient is if the patient is now community ambulation so they're walking a little bit more able to transfer low environmental environmental barriers full raw knee is what they claim and uh, multi-axial foot and with axial rotation i would add a specific foot multi-axial is more of an ankle thing a foot um flexible keel flexible keel multi-axial foot axial rotation unit that's kind of where i would go and with the knee four bar because it shortens during trans, uh, we'll go through that. Four bar knees are really awesome. They have that stability, the ground reaction force, and they also have the, so they're stable while standing, and then they also shorten during swing phase. It's really cool, I like that. But something like K3, right? You got a dynamic response, feet, good, fluid knees, it's fine. You could even do microprocessor here too. They just have to be strong enough. But remember, when you're doing this, you can do fluid knee, dynamic, response feet. Just remember that you're going to keep these consistent for K1, 2, and 3. Just have basic ideas of what you would like to use and reasonings for using each component. But if you break them up into categories, what you do for 4, 4, 5, 
I mean, one, two, zero, one, two, three, four. Once you get these K levels down, they'll be able to set in your mind a little bit better when you're doing your setup. You'll be able to determine quickly what device that you'll be able to give the patient. Then problem solving. You just have to understand, I'm going to say understand everything, but you have to understand the importance of questions that you're asking the patient. So this one, let's see. So during the formulation of the treatment plan, you'll be giving the information of the patient, such as the prosthetic leg, feet, sockets, and things of that nature. And we'll have the implementation of the treatment plan. So information of the patient's family, caregiver, prosthetic procedure, and possible risks and time involvement in the procedure. Then when you implement it, then you'll have to do the follow-up treatment plan. So all this information you should already know because you've done your residency, you've been able to work with patients, and if you haven't had a lot of prosthetic exposure, just understand the book smarts behind all of this, and you'll be able, all, all the reasons why. So why would you use a pin system? Why would you use a vacuum system? Why would you use um, certain types of feet and when? And I think you'll do just fine. Uh, we, we can go over some patient problems, some patient information stuff, but not specific patients. So there. I just wanted to help you just a little bit as you're studying. This is where I get my information from. The ABC website. I do get some information here. There are test questions and test practices that are available in other locations, which then I can help you with, hopefully. So hopefully you can pass your test. And if you need any help, you can just message me or put a comment down below and let me know if what other things that I can cover for you to help you pass your exam. All right. See you later.